Hey everybody, Strangers Wanna 3 here today with another replay analysis. We're looking at Hentai is Art. Uh, need more battleships, indeed. Uh, I, I think I saw one where it was like, uh, I think it was carrier a carrier, then all battleships, or something like that, and then one cruiser there, and the rest were battleships, or some crap like that. It's pretty incredible. But, uh. Oh, Anzac, I'm guessing this would be Asia server then. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Not sure, and I don't remember the, re the email anymore because I'm an amazing uh, <laughs> caster, right? But uh, it's a Yamato game! So, well, what's so special about the Yamato being in a matchmaking like this? Well, lol pen everywhere, lol pen everywhere, lol pen, meh. Torpedoes, uh, you know, the 5% torpedo bulge here will absorb a lot of uh, torpedo damage. And of course, they don't have a Yamato, so they can't just like hit you here, lol pen, into your citadel, bam, 50k from the front, halfway across the map. So uh, we basically have the ability to do that to pretty much everything except, well, realistically, Kurfürst and Bismarck's at close range, because of the fact that they have uh, the lower area, like 60mm, uh, and 80 or 120mm on the uh, Kurfürst, but the Bismarck's are 60mm on the lower, lower front here. Regardless, we're being uh, reasonably aggressive on the Alpha side of the map. With this many battleships, uh, it's all going to be down to, uh, well, whoever starts being able to focus the tier 10s down better. So, uh, chances are we're going to find ourselves uh, with quite some attention. But uh, they've got a Lex and then we get an Enterprise. So, uh, the Enterprise definitely has the advantage, especially considering ours is in a division with double US battleship, able to provide them a lot of anti aircraft firepower, while theirs only has a Monarch. But, uh, ooh, I think it was a stock Bismarck coming our way, and it seems the enemy's fight is a nab spotted on the other side of the map, so that's perfectly good news for us. Monty now spotted somewhat at a mediocre angle, if we can snap a shot off against that, perhaps we could do some decent damage to it, but uh, at this kind of a range, even with the Yamatos, we're not really, we're not really assured to get solid damage. So uh, we'll see what happens with that uh, salvo, but uh, we're now going to uh, get in a engagement range with the base marker. We are a uh, concealment spec, check that out, 13.5 kilometers surface detectability range as we get two amazing overpens against the Monty. That's the thing about engaging any battleship at long range, the chances of you being able to do a lot of damage if the base mark actually picks up almost 8k against us, I, it's not really that high. And one more time to get rid of that, there we go. If you don't, if you don't know and if you want to do any replays casting or anything, uh, the shifting, you just uh, click your mouse button, zoom in, zoom out, and then click again. If you forget to zoom out again, you'll have the uh, you'll have the uh, uh, the binocular sight. So just press shift again, even when you're back in the player view mode like this, it, it's going to go away. Anyway, so Enterprise is going for this base mark in our faces, and he's being forced to make a pretty bad turn against us right now. The question, realistically speaking, is does this base mark, well, does the Enterprise have AP bombs? And he might have had because he did wipe uh, quite a lot of the uh, health of this guy off. But uh, well, we're gonna plug a bigger cell into him right now. Aki's been spotted in Bravo and they've captured Charlie, so we should be reasonably comfortable in being able to push through a stock Bismarck and a survivability expert Bismarck, so uh, this should be no big problem at all. This guy's already on fire, so the question is do we want to just finish him off with our main battery or immediately switch and engage the next Bismarck? I think finishing off the target is uh, usually the better thing to do, although we don't really need all of our main battery to achieve this, but we do pick up the kill, so uh, there you go. Enemy battleship engaged and destroyed. We have a quick look at our uh, armaments here. Uh, we don't have BFT. We don't have any AA upgrades real, at all, in fact. So we're probably running accuracy upgrade on the Yamato. What's the secondary range? 7.7, .7, so we're actually running accuracy upgrade without the signal either. Uh, and we do actually have a fire prevention. Early triggering our heal, uh, assuming that we're going to continue to take fire here. Good decision overall. But uh, we, we actually don't have much on our ship. Wait, uh, hold on. I mean, it's 7 of the base secondary range, but that's the secondary signal, so we don't actually have the accuracy upgrade on our guns. But we don't have the secondary upgrade, which is 7.7. .7. We won't have accuracy, because we have the signal, which is 5% additional range as well. We're turning away from the Peter Bombers. This is normally not something I recommend. If this Lexington provides a good drop, then we could be in trouble, but uh, allied anti-aircraft with the Bismarck and just overall the anti-aircraft here does mean that uh, we can minimize the damage here, but we're getting clicked pretty badly over here. But we do lose our engine, so we're pretty much forced to damage control party, and now, well, we're actually down to significantly a lot of, 
you know, a lot of health lost there. We're down to 32k already, which is kind of unfortunate for us because, um, you know, we are the top tier battleship, but we do need to be able to get into the game. At least the enemy Montana has suffered quite a bit of a beating as well. Uh, Captain skills wise, we do have superintendent at least, so that's uh, good for us. Finding premium heal, which and the damage control party, which is important, as the Bismarck picks up another three k off our tail, which is, I mean, it's not bad overall. So hey, like this is like this is, this is confusing a bit. Like, if it's, unless I'm messing up the signal or the replay's messing something up. Ah, we're running turret traverse. Yeah, there's, there's no way that number 3 turret can track this much for the Yamato. We are running third traverse as we launch our float plane scout to uh, shoot over the island against Montana. I think it's slightly under lead, a little bit further ahead, and we're running reload, uh, re reload adrenaline rush uh, turret traverse upgrade uh, Yamato, which definitely it, it definitely is nice to have the uh, turret traverse upgrade if we're running reload upgrade on something like the Yamato, just because the Yamato has this incredibly silly. Uh, 72 degree, uh, second 180 turn time or something on the turret. It's like, you know, over a minute to turn these turrets around. It's pretty nasty. Regardless, uh, Bismarck up at 20 kilometer range. I'm, I mean, I don't play Yamato much. I mean, for those that follow my stream, knows I've sold like at least 23 of them. But it's a, it's a survivability expert Bismarck, so who knows? I kind of want to track these shells and see what the lead is like. Yeah, it was actually very well aimed, so uh, it's just me not uh, having played Yamato much. This monarch is uh, not really doing much there, just pretty much sitting stationary. And I... Ooh, it looks like we're even playing without track selected target turn on. I like that. Regardless, we're now pushing towards Bravo, which is uh, normally on this map. I mean, we have a, a, a situational advantage at this point as we get 20k off the guy. I mean, we hit him, we pen him pretty much, because it's 32mm of armor all over the deck. And, of course, don't forget the fact that... Uh, his belt is not that strong overall. I think it's uh well as a U it's a Royal Navy ship, so I think it's a fourteen inch belt. So thirty five point six or is it? Of uh, tapering it well no central areas is a fifteen inch belt with uh, fourteen inch on the uh, extremity areas. More torpedo bombers in the area, but uh, they have been chipped a little bit. But I think a lot of anti aircraft is actually uh, yeah gone down. So. <laughs> We decide actually to immediately damage control party the single fire from the battleship HE as we, we're continuing to apply the pressure to, uh, towards Bravo, slowing down a little bit at this point, but uh, using the concealment build that we have to try to uh, try to avoid uh, getting you know shot at too much while we're on reasonably low HP. But after this heal, we're going to be back up the half. So that's perfectly fine to uh, continue an engagement. Although the question, realistically speaking, is how much uh, HE are we going to continue to fight? The monarch just uh, salvoed, so it's perfectly safe for us to engage as well. Because the guy is never going to be able to get his uh, shells up again, although planes are going to spot us, to uh, properly, uh, you know, shoot HG at us again before we would naturally have concealed. But of course, the dive bomber is nearby from the enemy Lexington, kind of uh, screws over those plans. We are starting to get closer, and I think the secondary is actually trying to plink Aki right now over the island. Interesting secondaries. We're aiming for the Monarch again. The guy's not moving very fast. You can see the Bismarck passing in front of us, uh, in front of our sights at least. So, uh, yeah. But uh, the shell impact to do 6k damage, our damage comes up in 26 seconds, we don't actually have uh, much uh, f fire prevention equipment at all. Like, I think, I guess we'd be running... I haven't seen the rudder shift either, so I don't know if we're running rudder shift upgrade or uh, uh, anything, but uh, 50 second fire duration, I mean, we don't have the signals, that's an additional uh, bit of uh, fire that the damage we're going to bleed additional. Pretty unfortunate salvo, but uh, two overpens in capping a turret isn't too bad of a result all uh, in all. We're asking the Fletcher if he can rush the destroyer, there's no bloody way he's going to be doing that. His bow's facing the wrong way, so it's... Uh, eh. But uh, if we get caught by Aki right now, on uh, 30,000 health and ticking to fire, he if he gets uh, three torpedoes into our side, we're going down. Because Aki torpedoes hit for just over 20k, so uh, three torps into our side and uh, we are going to the bottom. Which could be a little bit unfortunate, uh, but uh, especially the Des Moines is going to engage us as well. So at this point, we're actually in a bit of a precarious situation, but the Kami seems to actually be interested in rushing. This is actually very risky. If he gets caught broadside by Aki, and Aki has AP load, and oh, never mind, the Bismarck and uh, the uh, Kami together are uh, applying the pressure on the Aki together, but uh, we need to try to work on this uh, Des Moines right now, just to try to eliminate him so he doesn't whittle down too much against our Kami. Des Moines is firing HE at the moment, as we get a pretty nice Citadel plus a lot of penetrations against his uh, Afton. 
Aki goes down to the Bismarck, and the one of the torpedo salvos from Aki actually went towards our cover, so that's uh, good for us. Now we've locked ourselves into a pretty solid position with the remainder of the enemy fleet in front of us. Finishing onto the mine definitely is the priority here. It's going to be able to get rid of a radar from the enemy ship, get rid of a DPM HG spammer, especially on that low HP. When it seems dispersion stuff the server, we only get one of a pen on his uh, freeboard. With the enemy Aki destroyed, we can still kind of pressure up. But we do need to be careful if the Bismarck I would try to flank us, but I don't think it's going to happen with uh, these guys. Even though they're reasonably low HP, they should be able to provide some pressure against the Bismarck and the Iowa over there. Still trying to like, nail the uh, the Moin, but I think he's just managed to get himself around the island here. Shooting at the curve first, I probably would have just used the enhanced turret traverse we have and engaged the uh, Bismarck on a flank instead. Trying to remove what's uh, actually dangerous to the fleet overall. The curve is just sitting bow on, sure he gets secondary, but he's not really going to achieve overall too much in my opinion. Being able to clean up the flank, at least, is uh, quite nice. And of course, keep in mind that these guys are showing somewhat of a poor angle towards us while this Kerfus is kind of rushing in. Although, of course, a rushing Kerfus is definitely something to be aware of. He could try to get past us and us Yamato being Yamato. We are actually at risk of being citadel Even if he gets to a this kind of an angle, he can shoot right into the uh, area over here, shoot through the 32mm armor that's angled rather poorly here compared to the angle that he's going to be shooting at, engage right through this, and underneath this area here, there is a area of citadel that is uh, like rhomboid shaped like that. And it's also... It's also like this kind of on the upper deck, so it's uh, definitely a vulnerability that a Yamato player needs to keep in mind. Using our last heal now, we've uh, definitely been taking quite a heavy beating over here throughout this game. Shooting high on the curve first, the only two other pens at this point. Prince Oigen picks up the uh, the uh, kill on the Des Moines. So that's one important enemy cruiser eliminated, as our Missouri Interpreters group over there aren't having the best day. But uh, Henri versus Iowa is basically a win for the Henri, because the Iowa is going to struggle to be able to engage that as our rear turret actually gets incapped over the superstructure. A bit unfortunate, but uh, we're not really going to be using that rear turret. And uh, well, I guess we've gotten pissed off enough of this Iowa, we're going to shoot back at him as he's just overpenning us. We're a bit overled, and looks like the Iowa has lost interest in us as we get three bloody overpens on him. If the Bismarck actually is able to ram the Kerfus, it looks like he's doing a close pass, but the ram there would have been an exceptionally good trade for us because uh, trading. Well, remaining turn K off a screwed Bismarck, and he does actually find the ram. Amazing good trade there as the uh, Missouri picks up the Bismarck. So this game is, well, it was secure for a while ago, but the question is, would we have been able to survive the curve as uh, decided to insert the gun in us afterwards? As we actually pick up two Citadels on the Iowa, good shot there as well. But uh, we, we've got a really good position for us, so all we just need to do is to sit here and continue farming with whatever health we have left. No real reason to do otherwise. And this Iowa, he is obviously more worried about the Missouri in front of him. I think it's slightly overlapped. We're going for the turret area citadel. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's the exact same uh, uh, layout overall. So uh, most of the shells go towards a turret. We just need to hit him enough to blow him up. And that health, and we do, picking up our uh, second kill of the game. And now we can just go mash the W button and go insert in this tier 8 little poor monarch. Again, 32mm of armor. That's the same thing about the Conqueror. The Yamato is actually a pretty good Conqueror. Uh, Counter to the Conkinol, it really is up to RNG and whoever hits more at that point, because uh, you hit the Conkinol with AP, you do deal a crap load of damage him and pressure him into the late game. He spams you with HG, he deals a crap ton of damage, pressures you into the late game. So it's like, you know, who really wins? Of course, if you survive and you have sufficient heals, you can regenerate yourself back up to uh, combat capability, whereas the Conkinol is going to be pressured on health overall. Now, seeing as the Fletcher has just dispensed a crap load of fish towards the uh, Monarch, we decided to go engage the uh, one on our side, and there you go, Fletcher picks up that kill, so uh, no reason for us not to try to pick up the remainder of the health of this enemy Monarch for the finishing kill of the game, and we do actually nick him 14,048. And that's it, one next we're never going to catch him, we're never going to get anything else left after this uh, battle. So uh, that's it, overall a pretty well played game overall, I mean, I don't like the Yamato overall. We got a um, bit of an interesting spec though, I mean, Yamato being Yamato and all, you do need to keep in mind that the ship does have a tendency to bleed quite a lot of health into uh, fires and whatnot as it's big. And you have to keep the front facing the enemy, otherwise you do risk being citadeled if you're closer than about 30, 40 kilometers. You can find yourself being citadeled from your broadside very often. And against large caliber firepower, especially tier 10 firepower against your broadside, even longer ranges than that, you can get citadeled if you're at a bad angle. But even then, if you do get, at a, you know, if, if you do show a bad, well, area of your ship, even at like a 35 degree angle where you can shoot your rear turrets, even tier 8 and 7 battleships can citadel you frontally through the uh, rather interestingly developed uh, frontal armor profile. Regardless, uh, we pick up 221k damage at the end of this game. Three citadels, two of them were on the Iowa of all things to shoot. One other Des Moines, 
pick up the quite some good damage off that overall. And we got our fireproof because we did uh, like quite some of the fires, but damage controlling in the middle of the map of the map there, I think, was actually the right decision. High caliber first blood, dreadnought. Obviously, we tanked a lot of damage. Used all five of our heals. So, uh, very well done. 2.6k base XP, having a look at the uh, scoreboards. Uh, overall, pretty good the distribution on our side. The two ships on our team that went down, actually, are the two guys underneath us. One of them's a Bismarck, so well done to him. Detail report, nothing really too interesting over here. We we're using a historical uh, mod, so we've got the uh, Nazi swastika there on the, uh, the Bismarck. 52k off the Iowa, shooting his uh, broadside. 30k off the Bismarck. Uh, Assault of damage all over the place. Uh, damage received. Mostly, uh, most of the damage we lost actually came from HE and uh, fire damage, although uh, AP damage overall from the shells themselves were the biggest thing. 30k from torpedoes, not a big deal. I, I mean, if we turned in towards the torpedo bombers, we still would have probably taken the two exact same torpedoes. Anyways, it didn't really matter. We did lose the engine, so that pretty much forced our hand to damage control party. Four bombs and 9k damage, those are HE bombs most likely, and, uh, well... The fires as well combined definitely do burn for quite a lot because we don't have it much stacked into damage control body. I'm guessing we're using either acceleration, well, probably we're using rudder shift combined with a stealth build. Pretty normal thing to do for a stealth battleship, although I definitely would suggest you use the uh, fireproof signal on your ship if you do have any spare because it means that you bleed just so much less health to fires. And otherwise, maybe we could have saved ourselves and been able to stay in the game for a bit more and keep the guns singing. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast. Uh, if you'd like to send your own replays, there will be a link or well, address in the description below. Replays.strangers103 at gmail.com is uh, the place to send them to. Give me a description of the game. If there's anything specific you would like me to actually have a, uh, a look at, give me a uh, nod in your email. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like it, please tell me why in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.